This car is just beautiful. This refraction blue. Oh, dude. Oh, he's got the American Panda badges on here. This thing looks so good. Same lip that I had on my Supra. This thing is just beautiful. Paint is like immaculate on this car. Looks really, really nice. Nice carbon back here. This piece is really clean. This car is like, man, he takes really good care of this car. It's nice to see it. So this kit is interesting. I think it's priced around 3,000, 3,500, something like that. This is for the wastegate, to hold the wastegate. Retain the factory wastegate. <clears throat> so yeah, you retain the factory wastegate. Then they also give you this custom, I mean, it's, it's a nice like Heim joint design, but you can tell it's cast. Yeah, for the wastegate arm. It's just like, you're gonna, so we're gonna be playing around with a wastegate. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna have to get right it dialed in. Bit. We're also doing a full cooling package, which is nice. It's gonna help out a lot, but I'm sure, you know, if he upgrades the fueling down down the road, then he'll be able to really take advantage of um, this turbo. It also has a T51R mod, which is kind of cool. So all of the uh, CSF cooling package is in and Zach is just about to remove the turbo and then we can go ahead and start assembling all of the new stuff, throwing it into the car. Yes, yes. Oh. Nice. All right. Time to remove wastegate from OEM turbo and then bolt all that stuff up to the new turbo and install. All right, wastegate is on the new turbo. Got the arm on there. We ended up removing the wastegate <laughs> shield because the manifold wouldn't fit with the shield on. Better clearance now with the shield removed. fitting. The first fitting you guys saw us put in was the oil return, then the coolant, and now we are putting in the oil feed fitting. Tiny little locator pins. So these locator pins are for the manifold and they help line up the exhaust manifold. You'll see the other side has another slot for it. And you'll see that little notch right there. Notch right here. So that's gonna slide into there. It's the gasket. And the manifold. Like that. Yep. Don't want it to stick out, so you want to make sure you go in just a tiny bit more than flush. So they do not supply you with a new gasket. You're gonna have to make sure that you get one. Sort of like making your own install kit. They also do not supply you with new exhaust manifold nuts. So you're gonna need those as well. I'm gonna have to finesse this one. Oh yeah. It's gonna be yeah, tricky. Much tighter fit. Much tighter fit. We'll get it in there, we'll get it in there. All right, turbo is in, and we're gonna go underneath the car now, lift the car up, make sure that the oil drain line is uh, seated properly. 
Oh, there's a good shot. Yeah, so it's definitely on an angle. Yeah. So that's the line that we need to address. You kind of have to feed the line while you're putting on the turbo in order to make sure that it's seated on it properly. We have the oil drain line and the fitting in. What we actually did was we ended up removing the plate from the block and then putting it onto the AN line and then putting the AN line and the plate back onto the block together. It's just too difficult to get it to line up perfectly. It's at like a little bit of an angle so it really makes it tough when you are putting in the turbo to have that line up exactly with the plate and the fitting. But we got it in. All right, you guys, uh, it's a new day. Zach went to work yesterday and got a bunch of stuff done. The entire kit is now in the car. Well, as far as the turbo and the plumbing, all of the oil and coolant lines are in. You're gonna see this line right here. This is an oil feed line right here that goes over. It actually goes underneath the manifold. That's why we heat wrapped it. And it goes over the wastegate, this side of the wastegate, not on the arm, but in front of it. And then feeds down through underneath here and over into the, right over there into the side of the block. You guys saw us put in that fitting before. All of the other lines are ran as well. And then also the 90 degree elbow, the silicone elbow that goes into the charge pipe and then charge pipe obviously up to throttle body. So all of that stuff is good to go. Um, we haven't done anything obviously with the exhaust side yet. Uh, I'm probably gonna do what, intake next? Yeah, I'm gonna sort out the intake and get the downpipe put on. Sweet. And then it's just a matter of reassembling and um, yeah, and yeah. fluids. And we, yeah, we'll be ready to, to put this thing on the dyno. What is up guys, it is a new day and the Supra is all finished up. We have the Remnant full turbo kit installed. And the last video you guys saw, we were just throwing in the downpipe. We had a couple of other little things we had to do to it. And then we had to do the rest of the fluids and now we are good. We're gonna get this thing rolling on the dyno here soon and see what kind of power, see what kind of torque it's going to be making. If I had to guess, I'd say somewhere around 600 wheel. You can see some of the shielding down here. It has the remnant logo on it pretty nice and then you have the cone filter set up but yeah everything up top looks pretty simple pretty straightforward kind of nice that you can't tell that there's a bigger turbo under there because of that heat shield but yeah i'm excited to hear this thing and get into some dyno numbers sounds insane dude not too bad for a pump gas base map look at that that is beautiful so now we're gonna start dialing it in and then we'll get into e-content but yeah this turbo kit sounds nuts got to say this car sounds very good with this kit it's probably tough for you guys to hear it over all the fans and the dyno and everything but man it sounds awesome and Sam is killing it dude look at these consistently beautiful graphs 
Look at how smooth those are. So uh, revision number two, put in at 498, 494. I mean, that is on pump, that is just solid. So I'm sure we got a couple more here on pump and then we're gonna get into some e-content. Did a six gear backup pull, all pump gas. Moving on to an E30 blend now. Be good, just filled up the tank. 523 on pump gas, not too bad, not too bad. Let's see what the E blend can do. Uh, so we actually finished up the uh, dyno testing on the car this week after we finally got everything together. I know there are some details of this kit that people are interested in and part of the reason I think the Remnant kit is, is very popular is because not only does it come with the turbo itself, it also comes with its own intake system and charge piping. So for somebody who doesn't have bolt-ons yet on the car, this kit actually does make a lot of sense because it already will have additional bolt-on components when you purchase the kit itself. This does actually work with the factory downpipe also. So for anybody who does have a downpipe or aftermarket downpipe installed on the car, it does bolt up to the turbo. I think the only issue might be the uh, bracket doesn't quite fit depending on you know what type of downpipe you have. But other than that, the rest of the kit actually comes with everything that you need for a full bolt-on package, which does make this kit very appealing. So after getting her on the dyno, this particular customer decided he wanted to go with Bootmont 3 tuning because he did want to do flex tuning. This one being a 21 Femto Unlocked vehicle did not have the MHD plus features yet until that is available which should be coming sometime in the near future he wanted to go ahead and have all the full capabilities of flex tuning so this one was set up with a flex kit to be able to read the e-content and then it was tuned on boot mod 3 with Sam from Dubai thank you Sam for uh, staying up with us to get all this done 93 tuning and e30 tuning this this particular car has the factory fuel system on it so we were limited with power output due to the fueling we do not have any upgrades such as PI or or upgraded high pressure or DI injectors yet on this particular car. But that is actually a really good comparison because this is a similar kit that we do even with the Pure 800 or 850 builds where we do a 93 tune and an E30 tune. So this one actually mirrors builds that we normally do with the MHD tuning, but is boot mod three tuned and it is also flex tuned. So this particular tuning can adapt anywhere from 93 all the way to about the E30 blend, which is about the max you can run on stock fuel system with an upgraded turbo. So as you guys can see, we have both the 93 data and the E30 data on the dynograph here. The 93, we ended up with about 524 to the wheels and about 534 torque. Spool up, you can see starts around 3200-ish, 3300-ish RPMs and really nice power bands, nice power curves. The E30 tuning, when we bumped it up, made a little over 600 wheel, which is exactly what we were hoping to see. This last pass, these are the final numbers for both sets of tuning that we did. It was about 608 and uh, about 584 if you round everything up together again really really nice numbers very typical to what we see when we do a pure 800 or 850 build just wanted to let everybody know that we also did these runs in six gear so six gear is the one-to-one -one for these cars and we do like representing that on the dyno to give you the maximum torque and horsepower output values that are the most accurate a lot of guys tune these cars in fifth on the dyno which is perfectly fine once we finished dynoing the car and dialing it in in fifth we switched over to six to get the final numbers so you'll know exactly what the power output is with the one-to-one -one ratio for the auto trans so this gives you really really good accurate data these are about i think from 50 to 170 mile an hour pulls on the dyno so very good representation of what to expect on the street so i know a lot of you guys are interested into what the comparison data is between all the pure 800 stuff that we do so we're going to pull up a couple tidbits of data that we yeah. can show off just as comparison data only this is not knocking or pushing any other kit in one way or another this is just pure data so that you guys can see for yourselves what the difference is and and how we set these cars up on a different tuning platform with a different turbo versus this one. I will say overall, we are very impressed with how this kit
it performed. Now, the word's out as far as longevity and everything else, because these are relatively new kits from a new company that has released these, so we won't really know how long they last and how durable the turbo is, etc., etc. But hopefully, from what we've seen so far, you're going to have some really good results if you do go this route. We went ahead and pulled up one of the comparison runs on a Pure 800 build that we did. This turbo actually was the turbo that came off our shop Supra. The Pure guys did send us their cast version of their new 850, so we took the original Pure 800 that was the one that was on the shop Supra that did all the racing, did all the times, etc., and we sold it to another customer, installed it on his car, and these are the results we got. Continuing the usage of that Pure 800, just to give you a testament of its durability, but this one in green is the actual 93 octane run that we did on the Pure 800. This is our custom MHD tuning using Fabian with Pure Boost. This is again a, a six gear comparison, just so that you guys know that the gearing is identical between the two poles. We tried to match the temperatures as best as we could. Obviously, it was a little bit hotter on the Pure 800 run, so it's kind of a disadvantage, but just to uh, give you the idea where being fair, <laughs> we're gonna add 20 degrees extra intake temps and show you the difference. So the green line is in comparison to the best 93 flex tune that we did for the remnant kit. And you can see how the remnant kit does have a little bit of lagginess in the spool, but that is probably due to the fact that the turbo does flow a little bit more than a Pure 800 would, since it is a little bit slower. The torque does peak a little bit higher just because of the way this tuning was done. And then the overall power towards the end, you can see how they're rough, roughly similar. The tuner did pull out the timing and the power just a little bit sooner than we did at the very end of the curve. But overall power outputs, you know, your 524 versus 516 and torque, they were at 535 versus us around, you know, 503 or so. We tend to try to keep the torque a little bit lower at the hit just for drivability and streetability and to hook the tires on the cars, etc. It just is a smooth transition and, and this is just mostly tuning how we're doing this and then try to keep the top end opened up as much as possible. And then we'll move over to the E30 tuning next. So the E30 tuning is up and this again is the comparison of the final flex tune on E30 that we did with the remnant kit in blue versus the red and black lines, which is the Pure 800 tuning that we did on this particular customer car. And again, similar to what the 93 octane tuning was, we do bring in the torque just a little bit lower. It's not quite as much of a difference this time. They're more closer in the torque output. And then obviously, again, our focus is to try to get the top end uh, maxed out as much as possible. Temperatures were a little bit more similar since when we did the E30 tuning, it was a little bit warmer for this car. So only about an eight degree difference in ambient temps between these two dynos. Again, six gear, one to one ratio. The Pure does have the advantage for the spool up. This one is at about 2,400 RPMs versus about 3,300 RPMs, I would say roughly. So it does have a spool advantage. The Remnant kit obviously is peaking a little bit more torque. Again, this is more tuning related than anything else. But overall, the graphs are pretty similar. You're not gonna notice too, too much of a difference mm -hmm. on the street overall. The biggest advantage obviously is that the Pure does have slightly better spools. So if you're looking for a kit that has more stock-like drivability, the Pure's still have the advantage as far as spool up goes versus the remnant kit. But without having the ability to really turn the remnant kit up past these power levels due to fueling restrictions, since we're still on stock fuel system, the truth is still yet to be known how much more it's gonna flow on the top end versus the Pure's once we start getting them up into the 700 plus wheel horsepower territory. So yeah, getting back to the beginning where we were talking about the difference between doing a Pure install versus this remnant kit, which is the Omega 65, by the way, if I didn't talk about that before. This kit does come with the charge pipe and the filter as well as the turbo, whereas the Pure is just the turbo by itself. So from a cost standpoint, the Pure's with the factory housings that you do have to supply the core for average out to about 2,500 or so, if I'm not mistaken. The Remnant kit is roughly about 3,500, but you get the additional parts. So if you're a car that's bone stock, the Remnant kit is one of those that makes a little bit more sense if you want to have your best bang for the buck and also add some additional bolt-ons that do not come with just a simple hybrid turbo exchange. Pure is coming out with their new cast versions of the 800s, the 850s, and now the new 900s, which will actually flow even more, which we have not tested yet. But I think the price tag for those is going to be around the $3,500 range. So if you go that route, the pricing is roughly going to be the same, except for the fact that you would already have to have the bolt-ons on the car. So you would need your yeah. own charge pipe. You would need your own intake setup. The plus and minus of that is if you want your own intake setup, like you want a carbon air box, or you want a specific charge pipe, or a colored one that matches your vehicle, a pure swap would make more sense sense yeah. because then you'd have to be taking those parts off the car to run the remnant mm -hmm. kit. And for those of you who don't have anything on the car, that would make sense to do the remnant kit because you get all the rest of the parts included with the purchase. Again, pluses and minuses for those that were interested in that kind of comparison. All right, you guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. There's a lot of information packed into however long this video actually is, but we really wanted to show you guys the entire experience from the moment 
that the customer dropped off the car, it got on the lift, we installed the entire kit, and then we brought it over to the dyno and gave you as much data as possible. And hopefully this will help you guys make a decision in the future as to how you want to proceed with your Supra build. If you are local, or even if you're not local and you wanna bring us your car, you are welcome to do so. We obviously work on all BMWs, Supras, S58s, B58s, you name it, we pretty much touch them. So I'll leave all of the information down below for you guys if you're interested in going with this. A big shout out to you guys for watching the video, staying tuned in, make sure you subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.